Good morning and happy Tuesday. I hope yesterday was fun and exciting to read a story that you've never heard before. We're going to read another story today and it's called, Can I Bring Wooly to the Library, Mrs. Reed? And this story is by Lewis G. Grambling and it's illustrated by Judy Love. That means we have an illustrator and an author. They don't work together and they're not the same person like Patricia Polacco. So this story is a lot like another story we've read before. It's a lot like Library Lion. When this lion comes into the library and the librarian doesn't want him there because he roars really loud and he ends up helping in the end. Well, this story is a little bit similar to that because this boy is going to want his woolly mammoth to come into the library. And he's going to try to convince Mrs. Reed that it's the best decision. That really he can't serve, he, he just needs it. He needs this woman, woolly mammoth to come into the library. Let's read this funny story to find out why he thinks that a woolly mammoth should come into the library. So as you can see, they're going into the public library, which is a really great place to go to get free books. Now, this is a woolly mammoth. Does anyone know what a woolly mammoth is? Yeah, a woolly mammoth is an animal that used to be alive, but it's not anymore. It's extinct, which means it doesn't exist. It existed a long time ago, way back in the Ice Age. Can I bring Wooly to the library, Mrs. Reed? So do you think this story is fiction or nonfiction? Yeah, it's fiction. Why? You're right, because it couldn't have happened before. This is a fantasy story. That means it's not real. Can I bring Wooly to the library, Mrs. Reed? Can I, please? If I brought Wooly to the library, he could finally get a library card. He could practice writing with Mr. Penn, you know, the new librarian volunteer. Sometimes Wooly mixes up his letters or makes them backwards, but with more practice, he could print his name on your library card application even, and you could read it. With his library card, Willie to charge in, into the kids section and pick out a mammoth sized stack of books to read. He'd be so happy and he'd lose a long, long bellow. Maybe that would be a good time for Willie and me to go over the library rules. Can I bring Willie to the library? Please, Mrs. Reed, can I please? Look at his face. Oh my gosh, how terrible. And look at the librarian. Do you think it's a good idea to bring Willie? If I brought Willie to the library and that thumping noise he makes when he walks, because he weighs a ton, was too loud. I could buy Wooly a pair of extra large fuzzy slippers. That way he'd be quiet as a butterfly, landing on a buttercup. And maybe I could pick up slippers for those rowdy boxy twins too. Can I bring Wooly to the library, Mr. Reed? Can I please? Here's a new library sign. No thumping. If I brought Wooly to the library and the returned books were piling up on your to-be-shelved cart, Wooly could shelve them for you. He knows his numbers and ABCs and he can reach the tall shelves with no problem. Can you imagine if he got stuck between the shelves? We could get him unstuck, but what a mess! We should leave the shelving to you, Mrs. Reed. But Willie could sit at your desk to check books in and out. Then things would be back to normal. Almost. Can I bring Willie to the library, Mrs. Reed? Can I please? What do we keep hearing over and over again in this story? 
Yeah, we keep hearing this little boy say, can I please bring Wooly to the library? Can I please? The author keeps repeating that over and over and over because he wants us to know that this little boy really wants it really bad. If I brought Wooly to the library and Cuddly Teddy wasn't in the reading corner because several of his seams had split open, probably from all the hugs he gets, and he was in the toy store being repaired, Willie could take his place. Willie is very cuddly. Then the little kids would still have plenty of places to sit and someone who'd listen to them read aloud. Willie loves listening to little kids read. Mrs. Page in Literacy Services says being read to will help Willie with his reading too. You, that works with you too. Can I bring Wooly to the library, Mrs. Reed? Can I please? What do you think? Do you think it's a good idea to bring Wooly to the library? Is he convincing everyone? Or is he convincing everyone why it's a bad idea? If I brought Wooly to the library on Halloween for your annual storybook character costume party, we'd be a hit. I'd go as the big bad wolf, and Willie'd go as Little Red Wooly Hood. Have you ever heard of the story Little Red Riding Hood? Yeah, so why do you think it's funny that Wooly would dress up as Little Red Riding Hood instead of the big bad wolf? Why is that funny? Yeah, it's funny because he looks big, bad, and scary. He doesn't look like a sweet little girl. That's funny. Then you'd read us spooky stories and we'd all listen. Wooly too. Bug-eyed, terrified, and frozen with fear. It'd be the coolest story hour ever. Can I bring Wooly to the library, Mrs. Reed? Can I please? If I brought Wooly to the library and Mayor Pinchpenny came in with overdue books, which he usually does, and he complained loudly that he wasn't going to pay any fines because he renewed his book by phone last week, even though he hadn't, Wooly flip Mr. Mayor Pinchpenny upside down and shake him. Gently, of course, until enough coins had fallen from his pockets to pay his fines. Then, Wooly would flip Mr. Mayor Pinchpenny right side up and continue reading his book. Can I bring Wooly to the library, Miss Reed? Can I please? If I brought Wooly to the library and it was your turn to drive the bookmobile to Littletown and you were worried about driving in the snow, Wooly could get you there safe and sound. Wooly grew up in the North Pole and he doesn't worry about snow. But if you did slide into a snowbank, Wooly just hook his curvy tusks around the bookmobile's bumper and pull. You'd be back on the highway quick as a blink. Well, that would be helpful. And if you had to spend the night in the bookmobile, you'd get used to Wooly snoring. Uh-oh, I noticed something on this page. Uh-oh, Mrs. Reed, my mom's worried that if Wooly comes to stay with us, he would get homesick, like I did at camp last summer. Being so far from home at the North Pole, he would miss his parents a lot, probably a lot like I miss you guys here. And the snowy, frozen weather too. So Wooly won't be coming to the library, but, he has a friend who will be visiting family around here. Wooly's friend loves to curl up with a good book. So, what do you think he's gonna do? Can I bring Saber to the library, Mrs. Reed? Can I please? Oh my goodness, what a funny ending of this story. He decides that Mm, maybe bringing Wooly isn't the best idea because he's a long way from home and he'd really miss his family. But maybe the saber-toothed tiger would like to come to the library. Oh, 
That sounds like it would be a good sequel to another story. So today, your question, you've already done number one. You've listened to me read. Now, you need to answer our question for today. Tell the beginning, middle, and end of the story. If you need some help getting started, I've already done it for you. Start with the words first, next, and last. So take out a piece of white paper, notebook paper, even a yellow piece of paper, and get started telling the beginning, middle, and end of our story. You can use the words in the beginning or first, in the middle or next, or in the end, last, to help you get started. You can draw a picture if you'd like. Once you're finished, you're gonna go off on your own and you're gonna read for 20 or 30 minutes on Raz Kids or books from your book baggie. And on the back of the same paper you wrote this question, I want you to answer the same question from a book in your story. See you tomorrow.